Thank you for joining us, Friendship Christian Church Virtual Sunday School Class. We are in Lesson 18 of Isaiah. We'll be in Chapter 6, beginning in Verse 1. Before we get into our lesson, let us have a word of prayer. Father, we just pray that as we go into your word, that you'll guide us, lead us by the Holy Spirit, that you'll bring us to proper conclusions. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're in Isaiah chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. And Isaiah has been around for a long time when it comes to being a prophet. Uh, he has been a prophet now for almost 50 years, longer than any other prophet I know of. And it started out with him not really wanting to be a prophet. He really uh, did not want to take that responsibility. He didn't want to take that on. But yet God commissioned him to be a prophet. And so he consented. He surrendered to God's will. And that, that's something we all need to do as Christians. We need to uh, know what God's will for our life is, and then we need to surrender to that will. So let us take a look here. We're in uh, chapter 6. Let's look at verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. So he had quite a vision here. So if he came in, like he said, during the, uh, the year that King Uzziah died, we know that... That was uh, somewhere around the year 740 uh, B.C. So by the time that uh, Isaiah died, he had been around for about 50 years as a prophet. So he lived a long life, according to uh, that lifespan of that time. And so almost all of his life, uh, he was a prophet uh, for God. So he, he started around 740, and he got the call. He got the call to preach. He got the call to be a prophet. He got the call to bring forth God's word. And we know out of the first five chapters, uh, he gave out a word of warning, word of woe. Uh, things were not going to be going good for Israel. And now, in chapter 6, he deals with a different subject. He deals with his vision of God. It's, uh, he, he, he has gotten a commission, but this chapter 6 contains not just his commission, but what he sees. He sees God. He sees the throne. He has a vision of the one and only Almighty God. And that's what he's telling us now in chapter 6. So that validates what he was saying with the woes and the warnings. It's not coming from him. It's coming from God. It's coming directly from God. He is just in God's service. He is just surrendering to God's will. It's not his will. It's not his word. It's God's. And he's making that plain in chapter 6. So uh, he sees here, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. Now we know, we know that no one is allowed to see the face of God. No one's allowed to see that. But he does. He sees the face of God. He sees God sitting on the throne. So we must ask ourselves, we must ask ourselves, how is this possible? 
Well, there's two, two ways. One, it's a vision. Uh, he, he is sitting a, seeing a videotape, a vision. Or, with God, all things are possible. And he is allowing Isaiah the special privilege of seeing him. God can do whatever he wants. So he's sitting on the throne. Isaiah is seeing him sitting on the throne, even e either as a vision or he's there. And now there's something very interesting that he tells us. He gives us this picture. He says, the train of his robe filled the temple. So he's wearing this big robe, and it's long, and it's got this train, and it fills the entire temple. He doesn't see an altar. He doesn't see any curtains. He doesn't see the Ark of the Covenant. He doesn't see a menorah. He just sees God on the throne, and there is no room for all the implements of the temple. God's robe is feeling, feeling, uh, excuse me, tongue tied. God's robe is filling all the space. So, what this means, what this means is that the temple and heaven are inhabited by God and his power and authority. Nothing else matters. Heaven is filled with his power and his authority. And so while the temple has an ark, it has a menorah, it has a lampstand, it has an altar, it does not replace God's power or authority. God has power and authority over all everything. He covers it all. So then he sees in verse 2, above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. What a vision. What is he seeing here? He's seeing this special creation. These angels are separate from any other angels. And they're above the throne. They're above the throne. Above God. Above the throne. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. So they're, they're hovering above. And they had special wings. Two, two wings covered their face. Two covered their feet. And with two, they flew. Their, their feet weren't on the ground. They, they floated and flew around and above the throne of God. What a vision. Now, we have uh, another set of angels called cherubim, and we had talked about them in Ezekiel. But these seraphs are different from these cherubim. Cherubim are below the throne. They're at the feet. They're not above. Uh, they are uh, provided transportation. And the cherubim, uh, the seraphs offered praise. The most that can be said with certainty about the seraphim, seraphs are collectively seraphim, is that they're a separate group of angels that attend to God. They have a special place above the cherubim, the cherubs. 
collectively be called cherubim. So they're above that. And they were calling to one another. The seraphs are calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy, holy, holy. We've heard this song before. Holy, holy, holy is the God Almighty. It's in the book of Revelation. It's in the book of Revelation. This song, this is going to be a song that we're going to sing after the tribulation. It's a special song. And right now, only the seraphim can sing it. But listen to this. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. Three holies. Three. That three is very significant. It means that God is a trinity. The threefold holy indicates the absolute trinity. The fullness of the Lord God Almighty. The full holiness of God. The Trinity. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is full of his glory. His robe covers it all. His power covers it all. His authority covers it all. It's only one God. One God. So, at the sound of their voices in verse 4, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Uh, it shook. Uh, can you just imagine the force and the power of their voices from heaven singing this song, holy, 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 and as the, the holy words go out, as the praise to God goes out with the power of their voice, it's shaking the foundations of the temple. The very foundations of the world, the doorposts are shaking. And then, and the temple was filled with smoke. The smoke signifies what's called the Shekinah of the Lord, or the glory cloud. It's, it's the power of the Holy Spirit here on this earth. That's the smoke that Isaiah saw. The power of the Holy Spirit on this earth. That there is a Holy Spirit and it is on the earth. God is living here. He sees it. As smoke, smoke signifies the presence of God, one of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And what is, what is Isaiah's reaction to that? That's what I want you to read and study for next time. Go back and reread these verses. Go to a theological dictionary on online or something. Look up cherubim, seraphim, cherub, seraphs. Look those words up. Get the knowledge of the difference between these angels and what they do. And get the knowledge of the Shekinah, the, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God among the earth and men. 
look up the temple and all the different items that are in that temple and how he can't see them. They come under the power and authority of God. And then, then read ahead and read what Isaiah's reaction was to all this. And next time we're going to come back and we're going to talk about his reaction. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, let us depart with a word of prayer. Father, we just pray that you keep us healthy and safe. Until we meet again, we want to thank you for these words and thank you for guiding us as we continue to study and read for next time. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, and uh, may we all go in peace.